So, we've already determined that this is the equation of a semicircle, and we figured out that the radius is what? All right, the radius is 1, which means, and where's the center? 0, 0. So it's going to go down to negative 1, it's going to go up to 1, and it's going to go over here to 1. So the, the base, I want to draw something a little bit better than I drew last in, a, in second hour. The base is going to look like this. Now, the cross-section, in this type of a problem, it's going to say, all right, your base is going to look like this, your footprint of the shape, but now it says there's going to be a cross-section. And that cross-section is going to be perpendicular to one of the axes. It's either going to be perpendicular to the x-axis or to the y-axis. Chances are it's going to be the x-axis. But you be prepared for anything. Be prepared for anything. If, you have, if it has to go with y, all you do is kind of flip this a little bit, and you deal with it a different way. Uh, now, what's the shape of the cross-section? cross section is a square. So once we have the base, all right, so the first thing, graph the base. A cross section would be uh, If I were to take this and I were to cut this, what would that shape look like? A circle. So whatever this shape is that we're making here, if I cut it like this, because the shape is going to be like that. If you cut it and you look at that, it's a square. So now what we need to do, after we graph the base, uh, the second thing is draw what we call a representative it's a representative rectangle and it's going to be perpendicular to the same axis that it tells you that it's perpendicular to. So in this case, it tells you that it's perpendicular to the x-axis. So what we're going to have, and you guys have to really buy into these representative rectangles, because this is going to be something that you're going to use. We use this when we started doing Riemann sums and finding areas under curves. And we, do, we had representative rectangles when we had areas between curves. We drew a rectangle that goes from one to the other one so we could do top minus bottom and figure out what's going on. Now, the same thing here. My rectangle is right here. And basically what this is saying is the representative rectangle, this is the RR, is a side of the square. So if it's a side of a square, wherever I draw the rectangle, if I drew it over here, that would be the side of the square. If I drew the rectangle over here, it doesn't matter where we go, that's the side of a square. If I drew it over here, it's the side of a square. How many, how many squares can we put in between negative 1 and 1? An infinite number. So that's, a, that's the whole idea of what we're doing here is we're saying, all right, we have an infinite number of squares that's going to make up the volume of this three-dimensional shape. But in order to come up with the total volume, it's like a deck of cards. you got your deck of cards. By one by itself doesn't do too much.
one by itself is super thin. You start, here's at five. Gets a little bit thicker. You put about 26 of them together. You start seeing that it develops a volume, you put 52 of them together. Now you have something that you can actually measure as a volume. So what we're doing is we're putting in all the different squares. But in order to calculate volume, remember what integration does. It takes you to the next degree. It takes you from like a first degree to a second degree. Now, volume is what degree? Third degree. So we need whatever measurement geometry gives us that is something to the second power, which is what? Not surface area, but just plain old area. So what we need to do, we need, get, need to get the area of the square. And if I kind of looked at the rectangle, what's the height of my rectangle? Well, what's this graph? We can actually just take the function at that point. The height of the rectangle is going to be the square root of 1 minus x squared. Now, this right here is the, the width of your rectangle, which we want to make really, really, really tiny. Now, what's the, the area equation for a square? No, nope, that's perimeter. Side squared. So we just take, it's length times width because it's a parallelogram. So we just need length times width, so we're going to take the side squared. Now, if this is the x-axis, this is a zero, what's this length going to be? This length is just the square root of 1 minus x squared. Because that's from 0 to the function itself. That's what the length ends up being because that's the value of the function at that point. So the area is going to be the square root of 1 minus x squared quantity squared. So what's the square root of 1 minus x squared quantity squared? <coughs> 1 minus x squared. So that's the area of a square. Now, so I figured out the area of one square. And this is just for one square. How am I going to figure out all of them? How do I add up all the squares between negative 1 and 1? The integral from negative 1 to 1 of 1 minus x squared dx. Well, what's the integral of 1? X. x. What's the integral of x squared? x cubed over 3, and I want to go from 1 to negative 1. So I need to plug in a 1. So it's going to be 1 minus 1 third minus, now plug in a negative 1. It's negative 1 isn't that going to be, how much is this going to be? You plug in a negative one, it's going to be a negative. It's going to end up being negative, right? A lot of negative signs going on there. So, what's one minus one third? 
two-thirds minus negative one that's really negative one plus one-third which is equal to what negative two-thirds so it's two-thirds minus a negative two-thirds two-thirds plus two-thirds which is four-thirds is that one of the answers Now, with cross-sections, this is nice because the formula, it, it's nice and simple. The integral from A to B, whatever the limits are, it's the area of the cross-section dx or dy. If all of a sudden if your base is being constructed with a relation in terms of y, then you have to deal with it in terms of y. But we also need to know like areas. Like what's the area of the isosceles right triangle? Or even a right triangle. Well, the area for an isosceles right triangle is going to be one half times leg one times leg two but leg the legs are the same, aren't they? So it'll just be one half times one of the legs squared. So if you're told that the shape coming out is an isosceles right triangle, you're going to have this side and then this side up and then it's going to come down like this. So it's going to be a weird wedge shape. So we can figure out that area. For a right triangle, it's one half leg one times leg two. Um, for a semicircle, what's my area? Is that area of a circle is pi r squared, isn't it? And then you divide it by two because it's a semicircle, so it's half of it. So if if we were creating a like a golf dome, where These would all be circles or semicircles. We could figure out the volume that's inside of the golf dome by integrating. But this is the formula you're going to end up using. 